on Sanditin. I believe it's the second podcast sorry, that I put on my channel. I'm so happy to be there with you. So today we're going to talk about the first episode of Sanditin, which aired on Saturday, 20th of March on PBS. Uh, so basically I'm going to talk about uh, the atmosphere, what do you think, what I think about this there's this episode, what we can expect, just my opini opinion about it. Of course, we talked about uh, the first season that I really like. Um, and I'm we're just going to see how this first, second season is going. Uh, I think there is also a third season that we can uh, count on. Um, I don't have the date yet because the second season is just airing on PBS. So we're just basically going to see how uh, it's uh, going. Um, basically, so we finished with season one with uh, basically Sidney Parker breaking the heart of Charlotte Haywood because he can't propose to her uh, in order to um, help his brother uh, and save uh, the Sanditon estate. He decided to marry uh, his former uh, girlfriend quotes a wealthy girlfriend who is now a widow in order to ensure money for uh, the project of his brother um, so he cannot propose to Charlotte and Charlotte is basically divested so the first episode of the second season yes I am sorry I forgot to say it it's spoiler alert so please if you uh, don't like um, if you didn't watch yet the first episode, go watch it on PBS and then come back to me um, and come back to listen to the podcast. Um, so I'm going also to talk about things that I didn't like and things I liked. Um, so of course, um, the, the actor of uh, Sandy, Sandy Parker said that he wouldn't come back to uh, Send It In for season two. Uh, so we expected that and we have new faces basically coming on this first episode. Um, so the first episode is had kind of a gloomy, dark atmosphere, because uh, we're seeing uh, that somebody's died, and I didn't at the beginning I couldn't think about today. I was like, oh, they're not going to make the character die. We're just going to talk about Sydney and his wife and saying that they are enjoying their life, and and like Charlotte has to cope with uh, her feelings, you know, because she's. We believe that she's still in love with him. But no, at the beginning, they may, basically we understand that Sidney Porter died. And what was very strange to me is that, except Charlotte, I don't see very the character uh, really sad. Because on the season one, we could see that they were really close to each other. Sidney was, very, uh, was there for his brother, helping him with Sanditon. And now we, we can't see that. So I was like... <gasps> how it's possible, like, even, like, his wife, uh, I believe that pe the character or not, even Georgiana, who didn't like, uh, you know, Parker, Sidney Parker, but at the end of the day, he was there to protect her, so I thought that it was kind of weird, and we only see uh, Charlotte, who is very much, like, uh, non-communicative, she keeps everything to herself, and we can see the sight of sadness on her face, and I really like this, but at the same time, um, the producer decided not to her to allow her uh, emotion because at the same time he was married, and it would be improper, not proper for her to express her feeling. But I think this was very, very strange. I was like, oh, yeah, he, you know, he died, and he had such an importance in the season one. I believe the the the. I think the characters are not expressing, you know, grieving. Really. They're not expressing their feelings toward his death. And I think that doesn't really reflect on what happened in season one. Then we are just presenting the other characters, you know, the former characters that we, dis we, we discovered in season one and how basically they're coping with their, with their lives. So we're discovering Esther that married Lord Babington. Uh, we discover also, we discover her aunt. Um, and there is new, 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 um, basically, um, character, which is very important. It's uh, Charlotte's sister. 
So she's the second one. So Charlotte is the eldest. She's the second one in the family. And she's coming to send it in desperately to find a husband. And I really like this character because I think it brings, while Charlotte is very sad and you can see the sadness on her face, I think the second character like brings more joy. She didn't know Sidney Parker, so she does not have the sadness. But at the beginning, she's just you know, bringing some fresh air to the, to the, to Sanderson and the story. And she's very, she's there to find her husband. So she's, because Charlotte had already had this experience and it breaks her heart, broke her heart. Um, her sister doesn't like this and she's like Charlotte at the beginning, you know, season one, like, I believe I want to explore any of my ocean options and I want to, to find her husband. So after presenting all uh, the, um, the, um, the characters, uh, we believe that the Sanditon story continues. We understand that the widow of Sidney Parker, Lisa Canton, she has half of Sanditon, that uh, Sidney Parker's brother still have to pay her back. And we're kind of, you know, showing with new characters and new love interests are coming with Charlotte. And that's, there is something that was kind of disturbed me a little bit is that, um, at the same time, we're, we're seeing Charlotte, who is not coping with her uh, basically grief because she's not allowed to express it, or the producers, you know, write it this way. But at the same time, we're seeing this sadness, and we're seeing that she has also new love or interest, so some men are interested in her. And what is happening on this first episode is that we believe that Charlotte decided not to get married, and she's basically going to be. Um, a governess. So I believe we're taking the path of, uh, you know, showing more independence women, and I think in a, a lot of new um, adaptation, modern adaptation of former novels like Jane Austen, um, Jane Austen, I think we are seeing more and more characters who are independent who decided uh, to write. I think it's the same type things in the Gilded Age that I've talked about. Also, we can see also this only character who decide to take their independence and to kind of free themselves of what the society thinks. Um, so here, this aspect is very strange for me because at the same time, I do understand that it's important to have this kind of character, but at the same time, um, I've seen like a couple quote that what they're basically shaming the other part, you know, the traditional women, like, are uh, they're too much submissive. I think we can allow themselves, and I think the producer can allow themselves to write about a story about a woman who is independent, who don't want to get married, who doesn't want to get married, etc. But I think at the same time, we shouldn't, we shouldn't really bash the other type of woman like Charlotte's sister who wants to get married, who is very practical, she knows that she doesn't have any money and she doesn't want to work. So her only way to have some money is to get married. Um, so what I really like on season one is that even if we have the traditional part of the story, the end of the story was very modern in the sense that every Jane Austen novel before Sanditon, uh, who was unfinished by her, um, it was very like, um, you know, it was, um, you know, she, at the end, you always had a happy ending. But this one with Sanditon, we don't have an, a happy ending. So for me, it was quite modern. And I think a lot of people who liked Sanditon season one like the fact that we have a quite healthy balance between the traditional part and the um, everything that is modern and new. So we had this kind of wealthy balance. And we're like, oh, this is very... This is very good, you know. I like you, Jane Austen. I still can protect myself in this time and the issues that women had, and how also the courtship, you know, that were present. And uh, second, I can see also the modern time, the fact that you know you cannot love is not as simply as as simple as that is what Charlotte is still saying in this season two, and I believe she said also at season one, and I think that's why, but if the season two will go in towards a very, very, um, you know, independence path, even if Charlotte can take this, uh, but we're kind of bashing the other part, we, I think we will lose this kind of balance that we had before, traditional and modern part. And I think it's the main point that I wanted to talk about this series, because otherwise everything, um, I was very surprised about Sydney Jeff. I think that uh, because the connection was so strong between the characters at the beginning, um, 
to show Sydney's death and not having like people mourning a little bit or well at the same time we don't know how many months but I think it's just a couple months uh, after the season one so we're just like oh you know it's just a couple months but at the same time like you know we don't see the the, the, um, the emotional connection between the brothers uh, Parker's and also with Charlotte was so strong that it's difficult to to just show senior death and also not having you know like people uh, mourning him you know so this is very strange for me and the end was very strange for me because she decided to become a governess even if I think you know women can be writers uh, Jane Austen herself decided to write novel to to not to get married so People, basically a woman can do everyone and I think it's also good to show this path but I just don't want to be kind of war between the traditional part and the modernity we still have to keep in mind this balance um, so I think this episode 2 uh, is going to air soon or has already aired I have to check uh, but I will see if I, I will do like some podcast on each episode uh, but this one was just a presentation of um, of the atmosphere and what they're showing to us on this season two. I'm really eager to see how the characters are going uh, to interact with each other, how uh, even Charlotte decided to go on this independent way. Would she be able really to reject any of her marriage that people will, because as um, I really like uh, one of my favorite characters, Esther, and what Esther said at the end of season one, when Laura Van Beethoven is basically proposing to her, he she's saying like, I don't wish to be your property and Lord Barbiton is replying to her like I don't I have no wish to own you you know knowing that marriage um, is not always like marriage can give you also freedom depending on who you're going to marry and also on this first episode of the season two what I thought that was very strange also is that uh, Charlotte at the end she said like love is not as simple as this but she's saying like because of what happened with Sydney Parker uh, we have also this you know she has this kind of really uh, sadness in her heart and she's saying oh I don't want to be in this position of a, with the man's power like this um, of course as the, at this era the society was built completely different but at the same time it, again I don't want to see her independent path resulting in a confronting between women who are traditional and women who are modern. Uh, I think there is to have a balance between it. It's very important. So I'm really eager to see how it's going to play out uh, with her. I hope uh, that the season two is going to have a lot of things interesting. We can uh, a bit see, like I'm seeing on the first episode, um, how uh, things will play, play out. But because of this death, of course the atmosphere is very, very dark. It's a bit dark and you can sense it from the beginning. Um, I hope you like this podcast. If you like it, you can press the thumbs up and uh, subscribe um, to this channel. Uh, it's free, by the way. And I see you for next, um, a next episode, I believe, on Sunday 10. And we will talk about basically uh, what happened. <laughs> see you soon. Bye.